Welcome to today's lecture. Now we will cover the topics related to Chapter 2, Stakeholder Relationships, Social Responsibility, and Corporate Governance. The chapter also examines corporate governance as a dimension of social responsibility and its role in structuring ethics and social responsibility within every single business. Finally, at the end of the chapter, the authors provide the steps for implementing a stakeholder perspective in creating both social responsibility and ethical decisions in every single business. Corporate governance involves the development of formal systems of accountability, oversight, and control. Strong corporate governance mechanisms help remove the possibility for employees to make unethical decisions. And there's always the presence of the classic agency problem, as such ownership or investors in control, which is managers, should be separated. Managers act as agents for investors whose primary goal is increasing the value of the stock. Investors and managers are distinct parties with unique insights, goals, and values. Corporate governance mechanisms are needed to align investor and management interests together. So let's talk about social responsibility, the importance of stakeholder orientation. Many business people and scholars have questioned the role of ethics and social responsibility in business because legal and economic responsibilities are accepted as the most important determinants of performance. Professor Milton Friedman said that the basic mission of business is to produce goods and services at a profit. And in doing so, business is making its maximum contribution to society and in fact being socially responsible. So Friedman believes that market is a better deterrent to wrongdoing the new laws and regulations. Adam Smith, one of the founders of capitalism, established expectations for motives and behaviors in his invisible hand theory. Smith distinguished justice as consisting of perfect or inalienable rights from generosity or charity consisting of imperfect rights that should be perform but cannot be forced upon people. Evidence suggests that caring about the well-being of stakeholders leads to increased profits though. The support stakeholders have for companies they perceive to be socially responsible can also serve to enhance the company's overall bottom line or profitability. Let's talk about corporate governance a little bit. Corporate governance provides formalized responsibility to stakeholders. Today, the failure to balance stakeholder interest can result in a failure to maximize shareholders' wealth. Directors and corporate officers have a duty of care or duty of diligence to make informed and prudent decisions. Directors have a duty of loyalty, which means that all their decisions should be in the best interest of the corporation, as well as its relevant stakeholders. Two major challenges for board of directors are officer compensation in that temptation to use knowledge about investments, business ventures, and stock market to engage in insider trading to remove the opportunity for employees to make unethical decisions, most companies have developed formal systems of accountability, oversight, and control known as corporate governance. Accountability refers to how closely workplace decisions are aligned with a firm's stated strategic direction and its compliance with ethical and legal considerations. Oversight provides a system of checks and balances that limit employees and managers' opportunities to deviate from policies and strategies and that prevent unethical and illegal activities. 
Control is a process of auditing and improving organization decisions and actions. Keep in mind that a clear delineation of accountability helps employees, customers, investors, government regulators, and other stakeholders understand why in how the company chooses and achieves its goals. Corporate governance establishes fundamental systems and processes for preventing and detecting misconduct, for investigating and disciplining, and for recovery and continuous improvement. The development of a stakeholder orientation should interface with the corporation's governance structure. So what are some of the views regarding corporate governance? The shareholder model of corporate governance is founded in classic economic principles and guidelines, including the goal of maximizing wealth for investors and owners. It focuses on developing and improving the formal system for maintaining performance accountability between top managers and the company's shareholders are stockholders. A shareholder orientation should drive a company's decisions towards serving the best interest of the investors or shareholders. On the other hand, a stakeholder model of corporate governance adopts a much broader view of the purpose of a business because it must answer to other stakeholders which include employees, suppliers, government regulators, communities, and perhaps special interest groups in the communities where the company operates. Because of limited resources, companies must determine which of their stakeholders are primary and which are secondary stakeholders. So what are the roles of board of directors? For public corporations, board of directors hold the ultimate responsibility for their organization's success or failure, as well as for the ethics of their actions. Board members have a fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of those that they serve. Traditionally, board of directors rarely perform the management function. They're concerned with monitoring the decisions made by executives on behalf of the company. In terms of compensation for both organizational executives and board members themselves, it's a very difficult ethical area because board members may place self-interest above those of the shareholders. There's also greater demand for accountability and transparency. Directors are chosen for their expertise, competence, and ability to bring diverse perspectives to the strategic discussions. Outside directors are often thought to bring more independence to the monitoring function of the organization. Many of the corporate scandals uncovered in recent past might have actually been prevented if each of the company's board of directors had been better qualified, more knowledgeable, and perhaps less biased. The concept of board members being linked to more than one company is known as interlocking directorate. Interlocking directorate. The practice is legal unless it involves a direct competitor. Okay, let's talk about executive compensation for a little bit. Many board members spend more time discussing compensation than they do ensuring the integrity of the company's financial reporting system. How executives are compensated has become a controversial topic with many people believing no executive is worth millions of dollars in annual salary and stock options, while others argue that because executives assume so much risk, they deserve the rewards. So the topic of executive compensation is important to boards because it receives much attention in the media, sparks shareholder concern, and it is hotly debated in discussions of corporate governance. One area for board members to consider is the extent to which executive compensation is linked to company performance. Issues related to high compensation are excessive risk-taking, 
a focus on short-term financial performance and reduce transparency at the expense of long-term growth. So how do we implement a stakeholder perspective? An organization that develops effective corporate governance and understands the importance of business ethics and social responsibility in achieving success should develop processes for managing these important concerns. Although there are many different approaches, there are some steps to follow that are effective in utilizing the stakeholder framework in managing responsibility in business ethics. Step one, assess the corporate culture. To enhance organizational fit, a social responsibility program should align with the corporate culture of the organization. The purpose of this step is to identify the organizational mission, values, and norms that are likely to have implications for social responsibility within the culture, short-term and long-term. Step two, identify stakeholder groups. In managing this step, it's important to recognize stakeholder needs, wants, and desires. Stakeholders have some level of power over a business because they are in the position to withhold or at least threaten to withhold organizational resources. Step three, identify stakeholder issues. This step involves understanding the nature of the main issues of concern to primary stakeholders like your employees, your customers, the government, and obviously the stockholders or shareholders themselves. Step number four, assess organizational commitment to social responsibility. Step four brings the previous three steps together to arrive in understanding of social responsibility that specifically matches the organization of interest. Step number five, identify resources and determine urgency. The prioritization of stakeholders in issues along with the assessment of past performance provides guidance for allocating resources. Two main criteria should be considered here. Number one, the level of financial in organization investment required by different actions. And number two, the urgency when prioritizing social responsibility challenges. And finally, step number six is gaining stakeholder feedback. Stakeholder feedback can be generated through a variety of means. For example, you can have satisfaction in reputation surveys. You can have assessment of stakeholder generated media like blogs, websites, podcasts, and even newsletters. You can have formal research using focus groups, observations, and surveys. So the goal is to apply the stakeholder model as efficiently, as methodically, and as inclusively involving all stakeholders as you can. So it can be considered ethical from the views of all stakeholders' perspectives. In summary, balancing stakeholder interest requires good judgment because broader societal interests can create conflicts. This topic of understanding stakeholders provide a good overview of the issues, the conflicts, and the opportunities for understanding more about stakeholder relationships. The stakeholder framework helps recognize issues, identify stakeholders, and examine the roles of board of directors and managers in promoting ethics and social responsibility. Remember that ethical behavior is a skill. You need to evaluate and improve your ethical muscles in fitness every single day. Good luck.